Section 18 of Some Answered Questions. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Some Answered Questions by Abdul Baha Abbas. Translated by Laura Clifford Barney. Section 18. Chapter 40. The Knowledge of the Divine Manifestations. Question. One of the powers possessed by the Divine Manifestations is knowledge. To what extent is it limited? Answer. Knowledge is of two kinds. One is subjective and the other objective knowledge. That is to say, an intuitive knowledge and a knowledge derived from perception. The knowledge of things which men universally have is gained by reflection or by evidence. That is to say, either by the power of the mind the conception of an object is formed, or from beholding an object the form is produced in the mirror of the heart. The circle of this knowledge is very limited, because it depends upon effort and attainment. But the second sort of knowledge, which is the knowledge of being, is intuitive. It is like the cognizance and consciousness that man has of himself. For example, the mind and the spirit of man are cognizant of the conditions and states of the members and component parts of the body, and are aware of all the physical sensations. In the same way, they are aware of their power, of their feelings, and of their spiritual conditions. This is the knowledge of being, which man realizes and perceives. For the spirit surrounds the body, and is aware of its sensations and powers. This knowledge is not the outcome of effort and study. It is an existing thing. It is an absolute gift. Since the sanctified realities, the universal manifestations of God, surround the essence and qualities of the creatures, transcend and contain existing realities, and understand all things. Therefore, their knowledge is divine knowledge, and not acquired. That is to say, it is a holy bounty, it is a divine revelation. We will mention an example expressly for the purpose of comprehending this subject. The most noble being on the earth is man. He embraces the animal, vegetable, and mineral kingdoms. That is to say, these conditions are contained in him to such an extent that he is the possessor of these conditions and states. He is aware of their mysteries and of the secrets of their existence. This is simply an example and not an analogy. Briefly, the universal manifestations of God are aware of the reality of the mysteries of beings. Therefore, they establish laws which are suitable and adapted to the state of the world of man, for religion is the essential connection which proceeds from the realities of things. The manifestation, that is the holy lawgiver, unless he is aware of the realities of beings, will not comprehend the essential connection which proceeds from the realities of things, and he will certainly not be able to establish a religion conformable to the facts and suited to the conditions. The prophets of God, the universal manifestations, are like skilled physicians, and the contingent world is like the body of man. The divine laws are the remedy and treatment. Consequently, the doctor must be aware of and know all the members and parts as well as the constitution and state of the patient, so that he can prescribe a medicine which will be beneficial against the violent poison of the disease. In reality, the doctor deduces from the disease itself the treatment which is suited to the patient, for he diagnoses the malady and afterwards prescribes the remedy for the illness. Until the malady be discovered, how can the remedy and treatment be prescribed? The doctor then must have a thorough knowledge of the constitution, members, organs, and state of the patient, and be acquainted with all diseases and all remedies, in order to prescribe a fitting medicine. 
Religion, then, is the necessary connection which emanates from the reality of things, and as the universal manifestations of God are aware of the mysteries of beings, therefore they understand this essential connection, and by this knowledge establish the law of God. 41. Universal Cycles Question. What is the real explanation of the cycles which occur in the world of existence? Answer. Each one of the luminous bodies in this limitless firmament has a cycle of revolution, which is of a different duration, and every one revolves in its own orbit, and again begins a new cycle. So the earth, every three hundred and sixty-five days, five hours, forty-eight minutes, and a fraction, completes a revolution, and then it begins a new cycle. That is to say, the first cycle is again renewed. In the same way, for the whole universe, whether for the heavens or for men, there are cycles of great events, of important facts and occurrences. When a cycle is ended, a new cycle begins, and the old one, on account of the great events which take place, is completely forgotten, and not a trace or record of it will remain. As you see, we have no records of twenty thousand years ago, although we have before proved by argument that life on this earth is very ancient. It is not one hundred thousand, or two hundred thousand, or one million, or two million years old. It is very ancient, and the ancient records and traces are entirely obliterated. Each of the divine manifestations has likewise a cycle, and during the cycle his laws and commandments prevail and are performed. When his cycle is completed by the appearance of a new manifestation, a new cycle begins. In this way cycles begin, end, and are renewed, until a universal cycle is completed in the world, when important events and great occurrences will take place, which entirely efface every trace and every record of the past. Then a new universal cycle begins in the world, for this universe has no beginning. We have before stated proofs and evidences concerning this subject. There is no need of repetition. Briefly, we say a universal cycle in the world of existence signifies a long duration of time and innumerable and incalculable periods and epochs. In such a cycle, the manifestations appear with splendor in the realm of the visible until a great and universal manifestation makes the world the center of his radiance. His appearance causes the world to attain to maturity, and the extension of his cycle is very great. Afterwards, other manifestations will arise under his shadow, who according to the needs of the time will renew certain commandments relating to material questions and affairs, while remaining under his shadow. We are in the cycle which began with Adam, and its universal manifestation is Baha'u'llah. Chapter 42 The Power and Influence of the Divine Manifestations Question. What is the degree of the power and the perfections of the thrones of reality, the manifestations of God, and what is the limit of their influence? Answer. Consider the world of existence, that is to say, the world of material things. The solar system is dark and obscure, and in it the sun is the center of light, and all the planets of the system revolve around its might and are partakers of its bounty. The sun is the cause of life and illumination, and the means of the growth and development of all the beings of the solar system. For without the bounty of the sun, no living being could exist. All would be dark and destroyed. Therefore, it is evident and clear that the sun is the center of lights and the cause of the life of the beings of the solar system. In like manner, 
the holy manifestations of god are the centers of the light of reality of the source of mysteries and of the bounties of love they are resplendent in the world of hearts and thoughts and shower eternal graces upon the world of spirits they give spiritual life and are shining with the light of realities and meanings the enlightenment of the world of thought comes from these centers of light and sources of mysteries without the bounty of the splendor and the instructions of these holy beings the world of souls and thoughts would be opaque darkness without the irrefutable teachings of these sources of mysteries the human world would become the pasture of animal appetites and qualities the existence of everything would be unreal and there would be no true life that is why it is said in the gospel quote, in the beginning was the word end quote, meaning that it became the cause of all life now consider the influence of the sun upon the earthly beings what signs and results become evident and clear from its nearness and remoteness from its rising or its setting at one time it is autumn at another time spring or again it is summer or winter when the sun passes the line of the equator the life-giving spring will become manifest in splendor and when it is in the summer solstice the fruits will attain to the acme of perfection grains and plants will yield their produce and earthly beings will attain their most complete development and growth in like manner when the holy manifestation of god who is the sun of the world of his creation shines upon the worlds of spirits of thoughts and of hearts then the spiritual spring and new life appear the power of the wonderful springtime becomes visible and marvelous benefits are apparent as you have observed at the time of the appearance of each manifestation of god extraordinary progress has occurred in the world of minds thoughts and spirits for example in this divine age see what development has been attained in the world of minds and thoughts and it is now only the beginning of its dawn before long you will see that new bounties and divine teachings will illuminate this dark world and will transform these sad regions into the paradise of eden if we were to explain the signs and bounties of each of the holy manifestations it would take too long think and reflect upon it yourself and then you will attain to the truth of this subject end of section eighteen recording by nicholas james bridgewater recorded in oxford england